Hey everyone, it's Paul from One Cast One Fish, and today I'm going to be showing you how and where to apply grease on your Evinrude e Etec. So today we're going to be greasing our Evinrude e Etec 150, and before we get started, I just want to talk a little bit about the grease we'll be using. Your e Etec service manual is going to recommend the use of the Evinrude Triple Guard grease, and that's because Triple Guard grease is designed specifically for a marine environment. Now there are alternatives to the Evinrude Triple Guard grease, however. We won't be covering them in this video. And that's because you have to be extremely careful when mixing and matching grease for compatibility. And for that reason, I've stuck to the triple guard grease for my Evinrude E-Tech. As you'll see, greasing our Evinrude E-Tech is gonna be a pretty simple and straightforward job. However, I'll show you a few things that'll make that job just a little bit easier and cleaner. Number one, a pair of rubber gloves. And that's because this triple guard grease is some sticky stuff. And believe me, once you get it on your hands, it doesn't wanna come off. Number two, Paper towels or rags for cleanup. And of course a grease gun and our triple guard grease. The first thing I'm gonna to wanna to do is trim our motor all the way up. Our first grease point will be for the main steering shaft. And if we look closer, you can see the old grease around that shaft. Now I've got a little bit sneaky with this grease fitting, and if you don't know where to look, you'll probably miss it. And that's because it's hiding right here behind the trailering bracket. We're going to start by attaching our grease gun to our grease zerk fitting. Now we're going to slowly start to pump our grease in until we have fresh grease coming out here. As you can see we're starting to get some fresh grease coming through. Now I'm going to come up here to the steering wheel and I'm actually going to turn that motor a couple times left and right to get that worked into that steering shaft. Now we're going to add a few more pumps of grease. And that should do it. We're going to want to clean any grease off of our Zerk fitting. And I also like to clean any excess grease from the steering shaft. And that completes the greasing of the steering shaft. Now we're going to move right along to our next two fittings, which are located on the tilt tube. The tilt tube grease fittings are going to be located one on the left side of the tilt tube and one on the right side of the tilt tube. I'll be the first to tell you these two fittings can be a bear to get to sometimes, but I'm going to show you a little trick to make it a little bit easier on you. All you're going to do is simply move your motor left and right to gain easy access to both of these fittings. Now one thing to keep in mind as we're adding grease to the tilt tube is it doesn't hold a lot of grease. And don't be surprised if only half a pump or one full pump is all that's needed. And once we begin greasing we'll be watching right here for fresh grease. We're going to clean our Zerk fitting before we begin to make sure we don't push any dirt into the grease attach our grease gun and begin to slowly pump our grease in and you can see it's already starting to come out. Like I said it wasn't going to take real long for grease to start coming out of that tilt tube as it doesn't hold a whole lot to start with. Now we'll disconnect our grease gun and clean up any excess grease that came out of the tube here. Now we're going to do the other side of the tilt tube so it's time to turn that motor around. Now we're going to do the same thing over here. We're going to start out by cleaning off our fitting, attaching our grease gun, and we're going to pump until we see fresh grease coming from the tilt tube. Again, this shouldn't take very much grease, so we want to go nice and slow, and there's some fresh grease coming out. It looks like one pump is going to do it for us on this fitting. Let's remove our grease gun and clean that fitting up. We're also going to want to clean up any excess grease that came out around the tilt tube. And that'll do it. Three total fittings to grease your Evinrude E-Tech. Before I go, there's one thing I want to point out, and that's the recommended greasing interval. According to your E-Tech service manual, the recommended interval for greasing is once a year or as needed. And in my case, I find that twice a year is adequate. I hope this video has made you more confident in tackling the greasing on your Evinrude E-Tech. And as always, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask down in the comment section below. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time on the water.